Good morning. This is week one, lesson two. Um, hopefully everybody's doing well. We're going to talk today about this stuff. Insulation. Um, once you have all your stud walls in, once your, your framing's done, um, we'll move on to the roof structure and so forth. But, I mean, since we're already at the walls, let's talk about insulation. Do I need insulation in my house? Uh, yes. <laughs> Unless you live in an environment where the temperature is you know, 70 perfectly year round and doesn't fluctuate at all, um, you need insulation. And even then I'd probably argue that you probably still want to put some insulation in. Um, there, there's nowhere on the world that I, that I know of that is that those temps. Um, in Michigan, obviously hot in summer, cold in winter, spring and fall can fluctuate. We've had beautiful days this, this spring and, and like today, it's kind of chilly out. So we want to make our home, that environment inside comfortable. So what that means is we need to insulate. We don't want the heat that we're going to generate when it's cold outside to go out because that means we're spending more money on whatever source of energy you're using, propane, natural gas, fuel oil, whatever it is to create heat. You don't want to waste money. Nobody wants to waste money. So we don't want to sit there and, you know, like in our house, we have a mixture of a propane furnace and we also have a corn burner. Corn for me is cheap, however, I don't want to waste more money than I need to burning corn to keep the house, you know, warm because I don't have insulation in my walls to keep that heat inside. So any new construction, Michigan actually has its own building code. Um, we also have our own energy efficiency code that basically says, hey, if you're going to build a new structure or like we did add on, these are the minimums at which your walls must be insulated. Um, and again, that's for remodels and new construction. Existing houses, there's nothing to say this, you know, that you must have this. It's a very good idea to try to bring yourself up to code, if possible, you know, without tearing out walls and so forth. Um, there's a lot of different products out there for aftermarket, which we'll talk about as we move forward. But let's talk about this stuff. Um, you can't see it, but there's a stud here, a stud here, you can hear. And this is fiberglass batting. That's called craft faced fiberglass batting because there's paper on one side. And to give you an example of what this looks like, this is craft faced. You have paper on one side, and the other side is literally woven, uh, very small sh shreds of glass. Um, yes, this is the stuff that if you touch it, you're going to be itchy. Um, wash with cold water. Use cold water, not hot. It helps drive the little particles out. Um, if you're putting this in, some safety precautions, obviously, I'd probably wear some safety glasses and maybe a respirator of some type, at least a face mask. Um, kind of now ironic with our society, we're wearing face masks, you know, to protect yourself against the virus. However, this stuff you don't want in your lungs. It's little, sh little tiny shreds of glass. Um, it's not cotton candy, kind of looks like it. Please don't do like a Tide Challenge thing where you're trying to eat this, that's not good. Um, the paper on the sides actually folds out. And the idea behind that is that you'll use just a staple gun and a utility knife to cut it. But that way you can take and fold that flange out so it overlaps the next piece just to create a little bit more of a seal. Just so, you know, we don't want air movement traveling in and out. So this is craft face. They make something called on face. Um, here's on face. No paper on it. Well, McMullen, why would I need this? Maybe you need to double up on some existing insulation. You don't need to buy the paper. Um, so here's the deal. The paper always goes toward the warm side of the structure. Now I know you're thinking, well, Mr. McMullen, in the summer, it's probably warmer outside. Correct. It is. So wouldn't you want this flipped around? No. The house theoretically should be the warmer part than the environment. So I, my rule is I always put it toward the house side. You know, that, that's the best way to look at it. There may be an application where it's done the other way, but typically the warm side is the side that gets the paper craft face. So McMullen, how do I know, you know, is there, I don't want to use this stuff. Is there any other options? Yeah, there's lots of other options. Um, code says that anything new needs to be R19. Now you'll hear these R terms. That's an efficiency rating. The higher the R number, like an R30 is better than an R19. The higher the R number means the greater insulating value. Our goal is to get the highest R value in the wall. Michigan code says R20 in your in your walls. Um, in order to do that, we got to build the two by sixes, and for fiberglass, and also um, 
the other method that we can insulate with is spray foam, which I'll show you. I've done some spray foaming in here. Um, I know you're probably thinking, oh, spray foam, this stuff. Kind of. I mean, you'd need probably about a million of these cans to sit there and do your wall cavities. Um, they make big industrial versions of this that, you know, professionally have to be done because they'll come in wearing full respirators and so forth. Because if you get this stuff in your lungs and it expands, I think that's a bad thing. <laughs> So this is good for around windows and like sealing up cracks, but if we wanted to insulate and actually do expanding foam, they have a big sprayer. They'll come in and literally come through, the stuff expands out, and then they'll come back with like an electric knife and shave it so it's flat with the wall so you can put up your drywall. Um, McMullen, is an R19 spray foamed wall better than an R19 uh, fiberglass? Um, the answer, technically no because R19 is R19, whether I'm using this or spray foam or whatever method is you know deemed appropriate, spray foam or fiberglass are at that same rating, that R19 is gonna be the same. The advantage though of spray foam over, uh, over fiberglass insulation is that spray foam will actually seal every crack, crevice, and so forth. It's gonna get into every little pore. So let's say you get that strong wind like we've had the last few days. You'll be in your room and you probably won't hear it and you're not going to feel you know like around outlets and so forth you won't feel that draft coming through they say um don't quote me on the year but any house built before like 1992 the you know the energy efficiency of the house is like having a three foot by three foot hole in the wall at all times because there's that much air drafts there's so many debates out there about hey do i really want to seal my house up so that no air can get in um, yes and, and no. A house needs to breathe. You need fresh air. Um, if you're not bringing in fresh air, you know, at a slow rate, you don't want it where windows are open in the middle of the winter, but you need fresh air coming into a house in order to let it breathe. Otherwise, you can lead to rot. Um, maybe if somebody in your family, believe it or not, gets sick, like they have the flu. Um, next thing you know, everybody in the house has the flu. That's why winter is so I guess you could say like flu season. It's because everybody's inside and the air's not getting circulated. Like in the summer, people have windows open, you're constantly opening the door and going out. You're bringing in fresh air. It's good for the house. It allows it to breathe. It allows things to move and contract. It, it, it's good to have that little bit of air seepage. So I don't know. New building codes say basically seal it up as best as you can because the more you can seal it, the better. McMullen kind of believes in, yes, seal it up, but at the same time too, you need air movement. You need to have that ability to get some fresh air in. Um, a lot of the new furnaces actually draw air from outside. Um, I believe it's now code. Don't quote me on this. I, I'm not today on my HVAC. Um, so fiberglass or spray foam? McMullen, what would you go with? If I got an unlimited budget, spray foam. Because I could seal up, you know, those walls on the out, on the other side of this. It would be sealed up. Um, I'll show you in the, when I move the camera here in a minute what spray foam looks like and what I'm talking about, how it's sealed. It's better for that sealing purpose. Um, and even spray foam, you're not gonna get every crick and crevice, but you're gonna be pretty darn close. This stuff, same insulating property, but it allows for a little bit more air movement because it's not gonna be perfectly sealed up. Um, I mean, I can put my finger through here if I needed to. So it's not gonna seal perfectly, but it's better than nothing. And then we're also gonna put drywall on the outside of this. Um, and again, to install a fire glass, a staple gun, literally just, and a uh, utility knife just to cut it to length. One thing to note with fiberglass insulation is it comes, when you buy it, it comes like this. Rolled up and compressed from the factory. Um, obviously, if it was all fluffy, they'd have a bigger container than this and it'd be hard to handle. So with that being said, make sure when you install it that you you know do allow it to expand to its actual size. It'll say on the bag, the instructions, you know, should be six and a half or five and a half inches thick. Don't ever compress it. It loses all of its insulating properties. The way that this stuff works is that you actually want it fluffy so it traps air in. The more air that can trap and hold, the more insulated properties it's gonna have. So McMullen, code is now R20 in our walls. Um, how do you, how does, like the inspector's gonna come? Where does it say that? It's really actually hard to see, but it just says dot, 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 dot into a letter R and then 19. Well, McMullen, you said code's R20. Yep. But this is R19. You're not going to pass code. This is where sometimes things don't make sense. Um, 
If you go to Menards, they don't sell R20. They sell all R19. I asked our building inspector for this township and said, hey, I can only get R19. He goes, yeah, that's fine. I go, but code's R20. He goes, I don't understand that. He goes, you can't buy R20. I'm like, I know, so why is it the law? He goes, I don't know. He goes, but R19 passes. I'm like, oh, that doesn't make any sense, but welcome to the world, like, welcome to, to life. Sometimes things just don't make sense. Call, make those phone calls ahead of time. Like I did, I called the inspector and said, hey, I'm supposed to put R20 according to the code book, but I can only buy R19. Oh, that's fine. Okay, cool. We just changed a lot of R19 then, but yeah, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to move the camera now, and I'll show you some of the spray foam I've done. I did the spray foam on this, and I know you're like, well, McMahon, did you say it has to be professionally done? You can buy, they call them froth packs. They look like two propane tanks that you can spray yourself. I had a full respirator, or full Tyvek suit, gloves. I mean, I had all the safety precautions. Um, and I'll show you some of the things I did with it. Um, but we'll talk more, too, about little things in a house that people forget to insulate. I'll uh, we'll walk around up here, and it's a little cooler this morning, um, but I'll show you what I'm uh, talking about, those little things that people forget about. I mean, insulating a wall, yeah, that's obvious. Insulating the ceiling hasn't been done yet. I gotta, I'm gotta. i going to do loose fill. It's literally little pieces of fiberglass that don't are all just like, imagine large chunks of like sand, basically. It's just, you blow it in, you use a machine, and you just sit there, and one person's down filling up a hopper, and then I'm just going to sit up in the attic and fill it up until it's about 14 inches thick, which will give me my correct R value. Um, let's go for a walk. So, you can see how thick the actual fiberglass insulation is. It's, it's five and a half inches thick once it's fully expanded. We can go around to the back side of this wall and you can see it right there. In fact, I'm glad I did that. You can fluff it up a little bit, but yeah, it, it fills the whole cavity. It's nice and fluffy. Same with that piece. Perfect. So spray foam. This is the header. The header was two two by um, eights on their side. And then I spray foamed over top of it. This has not been trimmed back yet. You can see it sticks out from the wall a little bit. So I got to come back and trim it up. And then on the sides next to the window, I'm sorry for the glare here. Um, between these two studs, I also spray foamed. Well, McMullen, and look at down here where the bigger cavities were. I put in fiberglass insulation, and then any joy or stud bays that were really small, I'm not going to tuck fiberglass in there. I'm going to spray foam it. And you can see the advantage of spray foam. It fills every nook and cranny. This has been trimmed back already because it does foam out. And you want to be careful because you can actually put so much foam in there that it pops out. Well, if it's going this way, it's also going to expand this way. And you can actually make it where... It takes that jack stud or trimmer and actually pushes on the window so your window doesn't actually function. We don't want that. Um, so you got to be really careful with the foam and kind of not necessarily know what you're doing, but go easy on it and not put a lot in. Hey, up in my soffits, that's where there's our top plate, double top plate up in the soffits. Notice I've got insulation up there, small pieces. I don't want air from those outside vents. I'm going to try my best here to show you what I'm talking about. There it is. So there's my soffits outside. You can see the, the vents every now and again. That air is going to be what gives my uh, ceiling a chance to breathe. So that air comes up. Well, McMullen, it can't get up because you've, you've blocked it. I haven't. These are called baffles. They're just pieces of plastic. They're super cheap, like 19 cents a piece. What you do is you run that out to your outside. There's a cavity on the other side of that wall up there. And what you do is you run that all the way in there. That way, air, fresh air from the soffits can still come up into your attic. And then it's blocked here so that insulation can be built up, up inside there. So again, that way we have it fully insulated. However, it still allows air, fresh air to get up into the attic area and breathe. One thing I also did long ago, and I have no regrets on this. You can see there's the old roof we've talked about and how they added on is um, there was some energy efficiency um, upgrades the government was offering. You could, I, I don't remember, I think it was like $2,500 in energy credits. Well, I bought two solar-powered attic fans. When the sun is directly shining on them, they actually pull air out of the attic and vent it outside. When there's no sun shining directly on the solar panels, they don't run. These have been awesome. Um, they were not cheap. They were like 300 bucks a piece, but I have absolutely no regrets on it. Um, 
they, you know, the more air movement you can get in your attic, for the most part during the summer, the better it is. Because that's, you know, think about how hot an attic gets. We want to get that hot air out of there. Um, spray foam, some other things I did that this, these little nuances, <clears throat> excuse me. I think I got some of those fiberglass. <laughs> um, so here's a heat duct or, or cool duct, whatever it is. It's a, it's a register, um, comes in from the basement and it blows through this insulated pipe. Remember we would, we want to, it's running through the attic. That attic's going to be hot. So if I'm trying to air condition the upstairs up here, I don't want any chance of losing that cold air into the attic. I want to keep it insulated until it comes out of the duct. Now look at it, that duct. Holy cow. Look at that McMullen. It's just like a styrofoam nightmare. Well, all those registers and ducts are, you know, they're, they're metal. So what I did was I came through and with the leftover spray foam, when I was doing that spray foam around the windows, I sealed everything. So now there's a perfect seal between this and the register and the register is completely enveloped too, because that register is going to get cold in that hot environment and possibly could condense and create moisture by doing it like this, where I insulated it. Now there's no chance of that happening. Um, the other thing too is corners, building corners. People forget about they're just a little tiny space in there. Put fiberglass insulation or spray foam, you know, any spot like that, um, down at the bottom of my windows, you know, it's not trimmed down there yet, but any, any spot like this insulate. The one thing I'm pretty proud of is this outside wall. I have a little bit of roof line exposed and I, there's no way to really insulate it. So I took and that's the roof right there. And I actually spray foam the roof all the way down. And it, it's it's not probably as thick as I'd like it, but it'll, it's better than having nothing. And also having this wall double insulated there really will help too. And again, any spot um, that I could insulate that, you know, is exposed to the outside, insulate. You, you can't really over insulate if that makes sense. I mean, <clears throat> all it's gonna do is save you money. The big thing I did with the spray foam up here is this. I know you're like, well, McMullen, this is what 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 is going on there? That right there, including, is all ductwork. That's where the pipe from my basement that carries hot or cold air, depending on the season, comes up. It goes to this distribute or you know place where it distributes into these ducts that send it to each individual room. And again, it's all been covered in spray foam. I sealed it up. That way no air can escape from it because I don't want to put my, you know, my cool air or my hot air because that costs me money to generate that. I don't want to do that in the attic. I want it staying in my room. Also, by doing this, there's no chance of it sweating and it seals it up. And again, I put a, it, it, it's sealed all the way around. There's no chance. There's my electrical coming up from the basement as well. And again, up there where it turns, you can see, and there's the other solar fan. It's starting to run right now. So this is how I've insulated up here. Um, this will pass code. The only thing I have left to do is, like I said, we got to do loose fill up in the attic, but I can't do that until I get the drywall up because if I just started spraying right now, it's just going to fall through the actual roof joist. So that's where um, we're leaving off. So I don't want to make this too long. I think I'm already at like, yeah, close to 20 minutes. So I'll stop talking here in a second. So hopefully that answers most of the questions. You know, just a basic rundown of insulation. Um, we could spend a lot more time than 20 minutes on it, that's for sure. Um, but it just gives you a basic knowledge of how, you know, we're going to insulate our exterior walls. Um, again, we talked about the other day, we're not going to insulate interior walls unless, like, we want them to be, you know, more sound resistant. But otherwise, I'm not going to do it. Um, so for this week, your assignment, you'll see it posted in Google Classroom, um, just below the link for this video. I want you to figure out what you would need for a, uh, a new construction. What is the actual R value is for uh, basement walls, uh, exterior walls, uh, and ceilings? What's those R values? That'll be your assignment for this week. You're going to have to go on and look. Remember, Michigan has its own energy code. You'll type in and Google Michigan Residential Energy Code. And look, there's a nice table. It's laid out pretty clean. But go through and look. You'll have to do some reading. It's not just there. So um, I'm not going to provide you the link either. I want you to do the Google search. All you're going to type in is Michigan Residential Energy Code. It'll come up. Make sure it's residential. We're not doing in, in uh, commercial or industrial. Um, otherwise, have yourself a wonderful weekend, and um, we'll be back next week.